Breaking news, the final countdown is on for a historic space mission with Hawthorne based SpaceX providing the first privately built spacecraft to take the astronauts into orbit. This is a live look at the launch pad at Kennedy Space Center in Cape Canaveral, Florida. And as we await the launch, I'm joined via Skype by author and former NASA engineer Olympia Lapointe. Thank you so much, Olympia, for joining us. We were just talking before we came on about how exciting this is. You've been in the control room before, before these launches. What kind of checklist issues are the engineers taking a look at right now? Oh, it is a pleasure to be on the show today. We are all excited. This is a first time launch for SpaceX to see if they can actually launch humans into space. Now, looking at the time frame before launch, there's a lot of things in which engineers will be checking out. Uh, there are approximately 12 hours of check and stands and making sure people are safe before the launch, and they're gonna be looking at the valve timing. They're gonna be looking at if the pneumatic sequencing and the pressure sequencing in the valves are actually letting out and holding in certain type of gases. They're gonna be looking at the pressure in the suits of the astronauts and engaging that. They're gonna monitor how the electronic equipment works within the, the uh, vehicle. There's so many different aspects, including the test stand. They're gonna be looking at how the test stand is holding up with this particular launch in place. So uh, the engineers right now are doing a fabulous job yeah. on making sure that two human beings are actually going to be successful in launching. And we have two astronauts that are going up into outer space today. That's so cool. And we were talking too about this, uh, this rocket and this uh, vessel that they're in. This is the first time it's carried two human beings inside it. Yes, yes. We have two seasoned NASA uh, uh, rocket scientist, in, in, if you will, and they have <laughs> astronauts. Uh, specifically, we have Bob Binkin, Robert Binkin. He has been a true expert in the International Space Station and all the intricate aspects of the International Space Station. Now, the reason why this particular Crew Dragon Demo 2 launch is happening is because they're seeing if this particular vehicle can transport people to to the International Space Station and back as a transport system. The last time we had a transport system like this was 2011 when we had the space shuttle program. And I was one of the individuals in mission control wow. helping launch the space shuttle in that time. And the other astronaut in this case, Doug Hurley, he not only flew and was on the space shuttle main engine and space shuttle program with transporting to and from cargo to space, but he is seasoned with his spacewalks and he is seasoned with being able to handle any type of errors or uh, issues when it comes to flight within the launch. And so they, they chose these two astronauts because they had the expertise to know exactly what is going to work correctly, what is not working correctly, and they have the protocol on what to do if things should fail. And the way this rocket works, uh Walk me through and walk our viewers through the stages that we'll see as the launch takes place. Great. Uh, not, not every rocket goes straight in outer space within one shot. There has to be a sequence of it going into outer space in a, in a way in which gives the astronauts the ability to remain conscious when they go into space. This particular SpaceX uh, launch is going to take off and it has a first stage. This first stage are rocket engines that's going to separate and actually fly back down to Earth to the ocean where it can be retrieved. Then the other part, the second stage is actually gonna go into space. This is actually the engines that are going to be separated uh, the first stage and the second stage are separated through a pneumatic system. Yeah, moment, and Robin those Doug rockets are actually going to go up and it will be flexible the... for the astronauts to be able to control the vehicle in the speed that it needs. And, and it goes, the launches are go really fast, 17,000 miles to 34,000 miles an hour. This wow. is an hour that these rockets are going to be going. So these engines are actually going to be able, I hope and we're all, uh, praying mm -hmm. that this works successfully. Yeah. These engines will be able to take these astronauts to the International Space Station and dock it into proper place. We are actually showing uh, viewers some live pictures here from the Space Center, the Kennedy Center there. Um, and one of the things that I thought was so interesting that you were telling me about is how important the, you know, this is a weighted vessel. 
how they have to measure the weight and balance of this ship as it travels into space. Maybe elaborate a little bit on that and explain to viewers why that's such a critical component of this launch. Oh, wonderful. Uh, just like when we fly on airplanes, there's a weight balance. They have to know exactly how much your luggage is going to weigh, and they have to pack it in the airplane in a certain way. So when you fly, there's not any wobbly aspects to your plane, and there's what we call weight balance. So the plane can fly successfully in air, and you get to your destination. The same is exact true for rocket engines. In order for anything to take off and stay in the sky and successfully reach its particular destination, it has to be weight balanced. And what weight balance is, is that engineers determine what the weight is of particular cargo as well as people. Now this particular capsule within the Crew Dragon Demo 2 launch is a new rated capsule for human space flight, meaning they're going to be testing the weight balance of individuals in this particular capsule. Mm. The weight of the humans has to be taken into an account and, and there's many mathematical simulations that's done to verify that this capsule can indeed handle the weight of humans as they go into outer space. And Olympia, it looks really good right now. It seems as though they are getting set to launch. There's less than two minutes now. Uh, I think we have that timer on one of the shots there at the bottom of the screen. Uh, there you go, one minute and 30 seconds, 90 seconds out uh, until launch. So it looks like as we're looking at live pictures of the Kennedy Space Center, and I believe those are live pictures of the astronauts there. Uh, and we should also mention Bankin, one of the uh, astronauts, is a Caltech graduate. Uh, and he is in there, of course, as you mentioned off the top there. It looks like they are both uh, looking or uh, both getting set there to, to launch as we tick down now to about a minute and three seconds. What's going through their minds right now, do you think, as they are now less than a minute Talking away? And then I'll probably just stop you. We'll, we'll listen to the, the countdown. FTS oh, that's sure. Armor. One of my really dear friends, Robert Kirby, when I asked him, what goes in through your head when you're launched? And he says, this is the one time I know that all America is concerned about my safety. <laughs> and that is just an amazing way that astronauts look at this, they know that there's thousands of us, thousands of people who are watching, praying for them, engineers who are analyzing for them, making sure that every single aspect seconds. of this launch is actually going to be successful for their safety. All right, so why don't we just, uh, I think we can dip in and listen to the audio here as we have about 20 seconds until liftoff. Sounds good. Stage one tanks pressing for flight. T-minus 15 seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Ignition. Liftoff of the Falcon 9 and Crew Dragon. Go NASA. Go SpaceX. Godspeed. Bob and Doug. America has launched. And so rises Copy. a new one era alpha. of American space flight Stage one and with it the nominal. ambitions of a new generation continuing the dream. 20 seconds into flight, stage one propulsion is nominal. T plus 30 seconds into this historic mission. Flying crew on board Dragon and Falcon 9 and look at them go. Falcon power telemetry nominal. M1D throttle down. We're throttling down to get ready for the period of maximum dynamic pressure. We're in the throttle bucket. Reports say all systems are go. Vehicle is supersonic. We've exceeded Mach 1 on the Falcon 9. M1D throttle up. We're throttling Max back up to full power as we're one through Bravo. Max Q. Copy, one Bravo. And we heard that one Bravo call out. That's just the second aboard zone that they're in. They'll continue to be on this until the first stage has done its job and they switch over to the second. At this point, Bob and Doug pulling about 2.3 Gs, 2.3 times the Earth's gravity, already moving at over 1,500 miles per hour. We've heard the call out for MVAC engine chill. That's getting the MVAC engine ready to light. That'll come at about 2.44 into flight. Right now, everything continuing to look good. 
next major event coming up is going to be the triple. We'll have main engine cutoff of the nine first stage engines, stage separation, and then ignition of the second stage engine to continue to carry astronauts into orbit. Coming up in about 20 seconds. M M1D throttle down. We heard we're throttling down the Merlin engines on the first stage. And we have Miko. Miko. Two Alpha. Falcon stage separation confirmed. Copy two Alpha. MVAC ignition. All right, we have stage separation confirmed. The first stage beginning its flight back. The second stage being powered by that single Merlin 1D vacuum engine has ignited and is now carrying walks. Bob and Doug into orbit. So they're going to continue under the power of this second stage. Stage two propulsion is nominal. Which will cut off at SECO or second engine cut off at about eight minutes and 44 seconds into today's flight. So a little over five minutes to go still on this second stage. You heard the call out to Alpha, so they're now in the longest abort zone that carries them all the way from about North Carolina up the eastern seaboard almost to Canada. Things looking good though, getting good call outs, nominal propul pul propulsion on that second stage. Bob and Doug continuing to make their way into orbit. Beautiful sight. We've just watched what appears Dragon to be SpaceX, a very successful launch so far, Olympia. Just an incredible and dramatic sight there. It just hard not to marvel at just what a yes. what a moment yes. this is. Um, let's talk about what the astronaut. We didn't talk about the suits they're wearing. These are unique yes. suits. Is that correct? Yes. Doug Hurley as well as Bob Binking are wearing unique new fabricated suits and so these suits are looking at the pressure system that's involved with this crew dragons demo 2 type of launch with any type of launch there are different pneumatic pressures that's seen within entering the uh, the upper atmosphere and these suits have to be able to protect the astronauts as well as give them pro the proper pressure when they are going at such a fast rate did you when we heard the announcer saying they're going to 2.5 g that's actually the gravitational force that is happening on their chest at the time. Yeah. So yeah. as they're going out into space, they're going out and that type of force is pressing down into their chest. They go through years of, of uh, training to be able to handle that type of pressure and uh, difference in uh, the atmospheric change. And so these suits are going to be testing out their ability to uh, be safe in those types of environments. And so what are we looking at right now? It looks like they're in space at this point that they've left yes. the atmosphere, is that correct? Well, it takes a while. It takes a while to actually rendezvous with the International Space Station. There's such thing as a launch window, and that when that launch window happens, they have exactly several uh, key minutes to launch the vehicle in that time frame. Otherwise, it will not meet up with its destination. And in this case, it's the International Space Station. So right now, if they've gotten to uh, the the first separation, the, the second uh, stage engines are working. We're all excited about that. Everyone, you heard the clapping. Mm. We are, I was clapping here. Yeah. <laughs> it was really exciting. Uh, they are still traveling. They are now still in their destination. They're they going to be traveling for several hours more. And they are going to indeed match, uh, match up with this space station. They are more than likely right now experiencing zero gravity type of... Uh, uh, feeling right now, uh, but it does take them a while, even though they are in that type of zero gravity uh, location, it does take them a while to map up with their rendezvous location. In this case, it's the International Space Station. And talking about, in terms of the stage of their journey right now, the most critical part, obviously, is the launch. Is that correct? I mean, at this point now, fewer factors could go wrong. I mean, can people sort of breathe a sigh of relief that it looks like this, I mean, until they meet their... Uh, their destination point, but it, can we all sort of whew, take a breath and, and, and realize it's probably going to work out? 
We've got to take a break within a uh, breath. Uh, I should say we've got to take a breath within the launch. That part is successful. Okay. So there's three legs of a particular uh, mission. There is the launch. That's number one. There is the mission itself. Can you map up and dock to the International Space Station? Are all the doors and uh, openings going to uh, retain your pressures, retain the air in the cabin for the astronauts? Uh, there's going to be testing the spacesuits in the mission to make sure that when they exit, they actually have that type of pressure and safety within their particular equipment. And then there is the descent back to Earth. And that is actually uh, an important part, too. We see in our history, space history, how important those launches are. For example, in 1986, we saw Challenger, and that was a mm -hmm. historic moment yeah. in which the space shuttle did not successfully meet its target because of the fact that there was an O-ring that warped in the solid rocket boosters that caused uh, the external tank that was carrying the liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen to actually burst into flames. Mm -hmm. And so that was an error that we all learned from, and I was nine at the time. That I know, all the I, I think I was like, around that age too. I was yeah, devastated yeah, to see yeah. it. Yeah. It was horrible. Yeah, and, and so that actually was what inspired me to become a rocket scientist and go into wow. that kind of work. And I, I literally was working in the exact department to prevent that in spatial wow. a program, and I'm very thankful for that. Uh, the second thing that they're going to be looking at <clears> is <throat> the descent. Uh, Columbia in, 2000, in the early 2000s had an error, yeah. and what happened in that case is that uh, upon launch, there was a uh, piece of debris that fell off onto the wing and chipped one of the tiles. Wow. And that tile came up, and when they were, with everything some seemed fine during launch, but when they came back into the atmosphere, mm. A lot of people don't know that when you come back into the atmosphere, you have fire when you go through the ozone and you have all these different temperature uh, types of uh, uh, temperatures that's seen on the particular vehicle. So in that particular case, the, the tile lifted up, hot gases got underneath mm. uh, the tile, ignited the hydraulic system, and then the Columbia exploded across the United States. So. Mm. This entire mission from point A to point B and back down yeah. is what is critical for every single one of the engineers to verify that we can successfully do this. And so far, I'm so proud of our NASA teams as yeah. well as uh, SpaceX, as well as all the other uh, engineering companies that are creating different privately owned uh, space transportation systems so we can move and successfully help the development of science in space. Yeah, I mean, this is such a historic partnership between NASA and SpaceX, uh, seeing, uh, uh, we're getting, oh, there, there we go, the signal's back. But seeing this partnership of, of commercial and, and also obviously with NASA partnering together and collaborating like this, um, I expect if, if, this, if the return and everything goes smoothly, they'll probably continue to, to do stuff like this. Yes, and that's what this test is, uh, verifying. It is verifying that the SpaceX new system, Crew Dragon Demo 2, can be a new space transportation system. Pre before we had the space shuttle as a space transportation, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> <laughs> we had, we had uh, the, the space shuttle as a space transportation system, and before that was Apollo. So now we are in a new phase. And the reason why the space shuttle was retired, it's just like driving a 1979 Honda Civic on the road in 2020. There's parts that need to be mm -hmm. replaced. It doesn't move as fast as some of the electrical vehicles that are on the road. And so retiring the space shuttle in 2011 was the safest thing that could be done. And we relied on Russian technology and Russian launches to be able to move all the astronauts into outer space. But now with this new breakthrough within SpaceX and their technology today, we can launch Americans from American soil back into space. And that is huge. I mean, considering the, uh, like you said, using Russian technology, certainly uh, it's not NASA's preferred arrangement. So this is definitely interesting. What do you expect um, in terms of technological know-how and kind of what they're learning from this. I mean, obviously it's going well so far. Do you think that this will be additional changes to the, the ship or the vessel that they're using? They'll continue to, obviously it'll continue to evolve. Yes, most definitely. The role of any scientist and any engineer is innovation. They're always looking for better ways to do things, better ways to make sure it's safer, reliability is in place. With any type of manned space program, there are safety, safety, safety and reliability type of aspects to know 
and to use. And with this particular verification of this launch, they, I anticipate SpaceX as well as NASA creating a large reliability and system safety division for this particular launch sequence and series of launches to verify every single check and balance is in store and in place for not only this flight, but for all subsequent flights to come in the next several months, years, and uh, developments within the innovation of this particular launch. And we just have learned that the rocket uh, has returned to the pad. We've just, I've just, we've just seen that uh, happen there. So that's a big, uh, a big segment there, right? That's great because uh, there's, there's always a question: Will the separation between the rockets work? That's number one. And two, will it go to its particular destination? So the first stage that separated, will it go back to its destination that's defined in the ocean? That's the question. Will it have the proper navigation to find its way back with its control system? Mm. It has a completely different logic in, embedded into it. It looks like we're and seeing a separation there of, some, of another component there. Is that, is that the other stage? Uh, we have different, there's, yeah, there's a separation of the other stage, yes. There's, okay. in order for it to actually launch and actually land, there has to be a separation in that part, in okay. that part too. So what's hap So we're seeing something pull away from the ship right now. Is that? Do you see what I'm seeing on the screen there? There's like a, a another component that's that's floating away from, from the ship. Yeah. Uh, what what happens is that, it they have to reduce the weight of the rocket. Got it. Okay. When it actually is in the ocean, so it doesn't sink. I see. So there's different ways to separate the parts and pieces. So it can float or, or be in a particular location so it can be retrieved without uh, losing all the hardware. So right now, I think we have a shot of the two astronauts in there. What kinds of operations are they performing right now? Are they just making, doing systems checks? Are they making sure they're on the right trajectory? They are concerned about those engines. Those engines is what's going to give them life or death. And in this case, it's life. They're checking out how these engines are working, how the, the thrust is, what is the proper ISP. In the rocket world, the ISP is the equivalent to your horsepower. They are adjusting the horsepower right now. They're looking at their gauges to verify that the pressure in their suits are okay. They are looking at their, des their design target. They're communicating right now with NASA officials, as well as SpaceX mission uh, assurance officials from their uh, control room to verify that the engines are working okay, and they're also uh, communicating with NASA to verify that trajectory is on schedule as well as how to correct any type of deviations in that because any type of deviation can pull you away from your outcome and in this case it's mapping with the International Space Station and so they are really heavily looking at the numbers right now. And the way, like you said, you were talking about the zero G, the zero gravity, it looks like they're definitely experiencing that. I mean, obviously they are because they're, <laughs> they're in space. So, um, but they're all strapped in, but it, it, I assume everything, it looks like they're in a, it looks like that vessel's just gorgeous. Look at the instrument panel and it looks almost looks like the inside uh, of a Tesla. Uh, it, 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 that, well, I, I, do you know what is so funny? I showed my mother a picture of it. She's like, woo. Whoever designed that, they did a really good job. You're like, you can actually buy the car version of that. <laughs> I'm, sure there's, I'm sure there's no accident that there's a little cross promotion here. Um, but yeah, so it looks like they're strapped in. Is there any point where they can, in this particular vessel, or do they have to wait till they're at the station to, like, to, uh, to unbelt themselves? They probably just want to stay put until they get to their destination. Well, it is safest for them to stay put until NASA tells them when they can unlock. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, I, I, if I was the astronaut, I would be doing the exact same thing. <laughs> Olympia, thank you so much. Um, any final thoughts as we uh, kind of head out uh, before before we leave? It's been a beautiful launch. I imagine you couldn't be happier. Yeah, so, well, do you know what? I want to thank uh, the two astronauts, uh, Doug Hurley, Bob Binkin. Thank you for placing your lives on the line for science and for space. And I thank you to everyone who's watching because this is a monumental moment in time where we get a chance to see that we can bring humans back out into space and that with science and innovation, anything is possible. So I'm excited. Beautifully said, and with everything that's going on right now, it is just such a beautiful sight to see this incredible achievement uh, happen live. So thank you so much, Olympia. We'll be back with more news coverage and uh, all of your local news. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Tom Waite.